The man who got that title shot, of course, is the man who, not that long ago, fought for the belt. It was in January. What a fight it was. Did very well as far as the promotion is concerned. Did very well as far as the pay-per-view buys are concerned. And now here he is, just weeks away. In fact, 19 days away from fighting for the belt once again. He's fighting Anthony Johnson, UFC 187, May 23rd. He is the one and only DC Daniel Cormier. Look at that. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you, man. Thank you. Okay, let's go to the beginning of this story. You find out John Jones is in trouble. You find out there could be some serious repercussions. What are you doing to get that title shot? Uh, you know what, man? I, I called, I called uh, Dana, called Lorenzo. Dana was actually on vacation, so he wasn't like accepting my calls. And um, he sent a few texts back and forth. And um, once he sent me a few texts back and forth and didn't tell me no initially, I was like, man, something may come of this. So uh, then I started texting Lorenzo. Then I called Dana while I was running on the treadmill to let him know that I was still preparing for the fight. You know, I mean, there, there are things that you could do to show these guys that you want you want an opportunity, and that's exactly what I did. And then when did you find out that they actually picked you over anyone else? Uh, Tuesday evening. You know, it was like when I found out that they were going, going to, uh, going to uh, let me fight for the championship. Um, I got a phone call from Dana and Lorenzo both. And uh, they were kind of talking to me, and I just asked them some questions, you know, about whether or not this is for an interim title uh, or a real title. Is this the main event or co-main event? Um, I just asked them a few questions, you know, regarding, you know, th that I had going into to this fight. Uh, they answered it, and I was like, yep, that all makes me pretty happy. Were these were these demands on your part? I, I demand to be in I the main event? Just or questions. Okay, just questions? Just questions you know? I just wanted to know, you know. It's like a lot of times, you know, people – we. We, we, we're so excited that we don't try to ask questions. And I just had a few questions. I've got a great relationship with the UFC, so uh, I've found something out, and, and you could do it younger guys too. You just ask. A lot of times you just ask, and a lot of times things happen. And so you will forever be linked to John Jones because of the brawl and because of the buildup to that fight, the, the animosity, the trash talk, all that stuff. So deep down, I mean, this was a massive deal for you. I mean, now you have a chance to become UFC champion. You couldn't get it done in January. Now here you are, here you are just a few months later, right back in that same spot, and you could get what you have been working for for so long, but you got it because of him screwing up. Once again, he has screwed up, and now it's serious. Now he's gone. Now he has been stripped. So... Do you kind of feel bad for the guy, or are you super happy that you know his his transgressions led to this amazing moment for you? Not happy, man. You know, I'm not that person. You know, I'm not the person that 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 that's happy when another guy has has bad things happen to him. You know, um, it's just you know, as you said, you know, we're gonna be forever linked together, and if I manage to win this championship, then it'll actually draw us even closer together, and we'll never. I, I will be the guy that won the belt when John got stripped because of his incidents. Uh, it will, we will be forever tied and, uh, you know, it's a weird thing. You know, I, I don't, I don't ever celebrate someone's misfortune, you know? So, uh, I, I think more than anything, I, I had a reaction on a human level, more than a competitive, uh, enemy level. It was more, uh, what's going to happen to John's ability to earn over the course of the next <laughs> year. If that's what it takes. Jade, be quiet. Jade, be quiet. Uh, What's going to happen to his, his, his kids and his fiance and his parents? You know, it's like it's a lot of things, you know. It, it, thank God he's got such a strong support system to help him and back him through this, uh, through this deal, you know. I can't help but remember you saying over and again, because they played it so many times in the promo, you are just a bad person, John. You are just the scum of the earth. That that back and forth before the ESPN interview. So does a part of you, though, say, and, 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 and I believe you when you say all these things, I told you all, this isn't a good person. This isn't the man who the UFC should get behind and get all these sponsorships and be the champion. Do you, do you think that way as well? Finally, I'm vindicated a little bit? No, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't need to be vindicated in my thoughts, you know, because guess what, man? At the end of the day, if even though I don't believe he's a great person, someone else could. You know, obviously the people around him believe that he is. So uh, there's no vindication. I mean... I could have been basing my opinions on things that he had done in the past that were public. So mm. it's not like I need another incident to actually say that John's not a very good person. You know, so uh, this incident does nothing to further my feelings to towards him in that respect. Uh, I don't need vindication. You know, in terms of a fighter, the UFC had every right to get behind him because he's the best at it. But um, just other things, you know, he was always it was always going to be. 
it was going to be something like this that happened. You know, it's like so many times and, and so many people, uh, when you hear people say, uh, one person tells you, Ariel, Daniel Cormier is not a very good person. He does some crazy things uh, away from the spotlight. And you go, yeah, okay, well, that's fine. You hear that from a, 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 a from John, or you hear that from a guy that I fought, a Patrick Cummins, or somebody that doesn't like me. You go, well, you kind of take it as a grain of salt. But then you hear from another person, and you hear from another person. And then you kind of start to go, well, maybe Daniel isn't the person that he, that he says he is. And I think that's what people kind of miss with John. At first it was just Rashad. And then it was someone else. And then it was someone else. And you start hearing stories. So, I mean, this isn't, this isn't something that happened overnight, man. You hear stories about, about the things that he did uh, outside of the cage for a long time. And it's unfortunate that now it's kind of come to the light and look at what happened, you know? If, when you win the belt on May 23rd, will you consider yourself the real UFC light heavyweight champion? Or will you only consider yourself that if, when you beat John Jones? You know what, man? We're fighting for the real belt. You know I mean? It's not my fault that John got into trouble. It's not Anthony Johnson's fault that he got into trouble. It's un- it's sad that that because of because of uh, you know his indiscretions, uh, it, it it casts a shadow over this championship that he's reigned over for so long. But I feel like it's for the real title. Did nobody said Daniel? You and Anthony are fighting for an interim belt. You guys are fighting for the real UFC light heavyweight championship, uh, and that's how I'm treating it. This is an opportunity for me to accomplish a goal that I set out to accomplish the moment I started fighting. Um, it'll be a little different, you know, when I win, because John just beat me in January, you know, so people can kind of point to that. But uh, we'll see what happens the next time him and I fight. What's up with your old friend Chael Sonnen saying recently, quote, only a punk would wear John Jones's UFC light heavyweight title. You don't think Chael would have taken that belt? I think he would in a heartbeat. You know, that's the thing about Chael, you know, and that's what you have to realize when you get to know him. You know, a lot of times he's just talking. And sometimes it comes true, so it, it, it's very weird because Chael said this fight won't happen with him in Rumble, and uh, <laughs> it happened. So it's yeah. like he just kind of, Chael's like the guy that just talks, 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 and eventually he'll stumble over something, you know. He doesn't know that that fight wasn't going to happen. He was guessing. And then by guessing, it actually, it, it, it happened, and now Chael seems like this, he seems like Yoda, you know, but in reality, he was just guessing it, you know, but he would have taken this opportunity uh, very quickly, just as he did to fight John whenever he had come off of a loss to Anderson Silva in the second fight. He will always take those opportunities. Uh, that's just him talking. This is the full quote from his podcast. If John Jones stays in the division, you accept the title while he's still in the division. You didn't beat him. You're a punk. You're a punk. I would never put a belt around my waist knowing the guy five feet away from me is the true owner of it. Damn. Put the belt next to Chael Sonnen in the seat. Today, Chael would still wear that belt, even though he doesn't even fight anymore. Right. You go, Chael, here you go. You, this is the guy, remember, Chael paraded around <laughs> with a fake championship for a long time after getting submitted by Anderson. He said, this is my belt, even though Anderson had submitted him. I mean, come on. Like, we got to think of who we're, we're talking to. You know, you can't just... Remember the source. Sure. Remember the source, Wani. You know, when this fight was announced, made official last week, people were wondering, well, what kind of shape is DC in? I mean, will he have enough time to make 205? Will he be in good shape? Is cardio? And I thought about it for a little bit, and I kind of feel like this is a blessing in disguise because, correct me if I'm wrong here, I felt like you had too much time to prepare for the Jones mm-hmm. fight. You may have peaked a little too early. Now you can really focus. And most important, most important, the thing that I have heard really no one say, you have Cain Velasquez back. You didn't have him for the Jones fight. So do you kind of feel like the shortened camp and having Cain, I mean, these are two huge factors in your favor at this point. This is a huge, huge part of my training, uh, you know, just in general normally uh, that I didn't have. Last fight, I was so tied to Jones emotionally. I was so invested um, I did like a 14-week training camp, and three, four weeks before the fight, I was fighting five rounds with no problem, switching guys every round. Uh, but then by the end of my training camp, era, I promised I was barely able to get through three rounds. And uh, in the fight, you know, after the third round, it just felt like um, my body just wasn't listening to me anymore. You know, and that that is a tri- that is a testament to John's uh, abilities and what he did to me in the fight. He was able to get a lot of body damage off on me. He was able to. Uh, he did a good job, and he was the reason that, that, that I started to get tired. But, but I really do feel like I had a little too much uh, in that fight, especially knowing, like, after the fight, um, there was a lot of disappointment, but then it felt like a relief, like the weight of the world was gone, that I didn't have to deal with all the stuff that I was dealing with in regards to John Jones anymore. It was, it was actually, uh, I was way too invested. 
How much do you weigh right now? Right now, like 229, 230. You know, so I'm not that bad. Last weekend, I weighed out of practice. It was like 227. So uh, then through the weekend, I put on a few more pounds. But uh, I'm just trying to get down to waking up about 225, and I'll be good. You know, that's normally what I weigh fight week. Um, right now, I'm about 232 pounds, 230, somewhere in that area. And uh, uh, it, it'll be fine. You know, so I just need to lose about five more pounds, and, and I'll be okay. You know, DC, when I think about this fight and I think about you, I think about this song. One of the best songs out there, my favorite song. <laughs> because it's unbelievable. I'm hearing people, it's like you get one loss, one loss on your record, one to the greatest one. light heavyweight fighter of all time, at least right now. And I kind of feel like people think you're a scrub. It's amazing. Like the comments that I'm hearing, like, what? DC doesn't deserve this. What has he done to deserve this? It's amazing. Do you kind of feel the same way that people have forgotten about DC? And can I make the pitch right now for you to come out to the song? Will you be the first to step up and do the right thing and let the people know that they have forgotten just how damn good you are? <laughs> uh, you know what, Helwani, man? It's, again, I do love that song. You know, <laughs> God, you know, it's, it's not the best song, but best song. You know what? it's something that you would expect you to like. I mean, honestly, come on. But uh, um, I like it, man. You know, but the truth of the matter is, Helwani, I won 15 straight fights, got to the top of the sport. I fought for the UFC championship against the number one pound for pound fighter in the world. Uh, most guys lose early. Most guys lose in the middle. Most guys lose to people, even though it's years before they have hiccups. I never had that hiccup. I made it to the top of this sport before actually suffering my first loss to the number one pound for pound guy in the world. And somehow I have gone from this guy that was, they thought I could beat the number one pound for pound <laughs> yeah. fight in the world to a complete scrub. It's like I'm walking into a, a fight with Anthony Johnson and I'm going to just get destroyed. It makes absolutely no sense to me. Um, and, and, and you know what, man, it's, 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 it's a test. It's a testament to what Anthony has done, but it's also like, it's also very disrespectful in the fact that, I've lost one time, and I've beaten so many guys. I've won the majority of every round I've ever fought, and last time I lost rounds against Jones was the first time that I've lost rounds in a fight. It's true. But now yeah. this guy, this guy that has actually recommitted himself to this sport, this guy that has, has, has done things that no one expected him to do is going to just walk through me. That makes no sense. And, and I'm telling you right now, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. There's no way this is happening. Um, people are going to respect me because they have to. There is no way that Anthony Rumble Johnson is going to walk me down in the cage and just beat me up. That makes no sense. His coach told me, Henry Hoof told me, that this is a better matchup for them, mm -hmm. that, that you're easier to figure out. We know what to expect from D.C. John Jones is tricky, creative. What do you make of those hey, comments? You know what, man? It is, it is Henry Hoof's job to actually instill confidence in his, his athlete. And if you're preparing for the number one pound pound fight in the world, logic tells you it's an easier fight. So, I mean, I'm not the number one pound pound fighter in the world. I'm another guy in the division, but I'm not number one pound for pound. I'm not undefeated anymore as John is. I haven't defended the light heavyweight championship eight times. So, guess what? I don't know where Henry's from. I guess he's from the Netherlands or something. So, maybe he got lost in translation. Henry, all those things that I just listed obviously makes John Jones a different opponent than me. I mean, come on. So I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Great observation, Henry Hoof. I mean, Jesus. Are you predictable though? Do people know, you know, the game plan at this point? How to beat you? Yeah, I'm gonna go fight. I'm gonna go fight. I'm gonna go fight. I'm not gonna run around the octagon. I'm gonna go forward. I'm gonna pressure. I'm gonna try to secure takedowns. But I'm gonna box and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna mix it up. It's it's pretty simple. Like just because you know what's gonna happen doesn't mean that you have the game plan to stop it. Cain uh, Velasquez does the same thing every single time. He goes forward, he puts pressure, he attempts takedowns, and he boxes. Same thing. We, we do the same thing. There's no secret. We're going to go and try and fight um, and try to win this championship. Is Rumble Johnson overrated in the sense that not too long ago, this was a guy who was losing. He was a mid-tier welterweight, right? I mean, he was losing some fights to mid-tier welterweights at 170 pounds. He had the issues. All of a sudden, he looks like a world beater. I mean, take nothing away. But deep down, do you think he's overrated? I don't think he's overrated, N not one bit. You know, I think he, I, I think he deserves the credit that he's gotten. Um, but again, you know, as I've said time and time again, you know, I've, I've gotten a little bit, a little bit of a. Uh, it's been a little bad. Uh, people coming back at me upset because I said these things about Rumble. 
But it's not like I'm lying. I'm only stating facts. You know, Rumble Johnson has smashed everybody over the course of nine fights. He beat uh, Phil Davis every second of every round. He beat Andre Arlovsky every second of every round. Actually, Arlovsky won a round against him in, against, uh, in the World Series of Fighting after he pretty much finished him in the first round. But when he didn't knock those guys out, he was still cruising. You know, he hasn't really been dealt that adversity that he received at welterweight. So, uh, to me, it's just a matter of seeing how does he deal with adversity now that he's just this monster. You know, people have made him out to be uh, King Kong and Godzilla all in one. And, and as I said, you know, nobody's like that. Even sharing the cage with Jones, he's still not some unbeatable uh, uh, being. You know, he's not Ultron. He's not, he's not a, he is not the eater of worlds uh galactus you know and if you if you look at comic books and stuff but he's not he's not this world world beater you know these are guys these are men these are human beings they're just like me they can lose on any night just as i did how does this happen though how does a guy who is at 170 do this at 205 in your opinion how has he become this knockout artist two divisions mm -hmm. up i think that he's just kind of found his home you know before he's always a big guy cutting way too yeah. much weight cutting like 235 pounds to, to 170 that's insane um and you obviously lose something there i think rumble has found his home at at walt at uh, 205 uh the dude's the dude's a monster man he's a beast and and he's got confidence you know a lot of times it boils down to confidence i walked into the octagon on january 3rd thinking that i had every everything to beat john jones and i was confident and he did what he had to do to actually beat that out of me make me believe that i wasn't going to win the fight and he did it so uh, it's confidence. I have to go and prove to Anthony that, um, you know, th those fights that he lost, can it can still happen. People like me will never know what it's like to fight for the belt. We'll never know what it's like to be in the cage. Do you think that the fact that you had this experience not that long ago where you've been through the whole buildup, it couldn't have been, you know, bigger, more magnified, and you lost. And I remember seeing you afterwards. I mean, you were crushed. You were very emotional. The fact that it just happened in January, and he's never been through that. He's never sniffed it. He doesn't know what the media attention is going to be like. This is a big card. Do you think that's something that works in your favor, or is that something that people like myself who have never experienced it kind of you know, play up a little too much leading up to these fights? It's a big deal, man. You know, a lot of times it's a big deal. You know, um, and some people strive in it. Some people don't. You know, it's a big deal. Uh, this will be more media. Uh, the exposure will be bigger. And, and and it also will be a little more to carry because of the Jones situation that will loom over the top of this fight. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. But you know what, man? This is the fourth time now that I've trained and fought in five-round fights. I trained twice for Barnett. I trained twice for Jones. Uh, and I fought in a five-round fight against Barnett. And I fought a five-round fight against Jones. So uh, this is like the fourth time that I've prepared for a five-round main event. I'm not sure Anthony ever has uh, just the, the Gustafson fight, maybe the first time that he's ever prepared for a five-round main event. Uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, that'll come into play to, to, uh, in a few weeks. Have you allowed yourself to envision the fight? Do you have any idea how it's going to play out? Uh, you know what, man? It's... Um, I've thought about it a little bit, you know, not yet. You know, I do my visualization stuff as I get closer, but I'm watching film, uh, trying to see what Rumble uh, does, you know, try to pick up on any habits uh, that he may carry into the octagon. Uh, so so I'm, I'm watching him right now, still taking, uh, taking notice, making my observations. And then, uh, then as we get closer, I will start to break down and see where I match up well with him, uh, what I do better than him and uh, how, how we match up in terms of against each other. As long as Kane is the champion at heavyweight, you're not going to fight there anymore. You don't want to fight your friend. Do you feel like this is do or die for you as far as being a UFC champion is concerned? It's hard to get a third crack if you lose two. It has to be. I mean, and I'm not putting any more pressure on myself, but who gets an opportunity to do this twice back-to-back -back after losing? Yeah. So this is, this is pressure that I want. I want to believe that if I don't do it this time, there will not be another opportunity. So... And you're putting um, that pressure on yourself. I do. I want it. I want to win this championship fight, man. I can't lose to Anthony Johnson. I just really can't lose to Anthony Johnson. Wow. Why would you put that pressure on yourself? It's because, man, everything that I've, I've wanted to do and be in this sport, um, I was up until January 3rd. I, want, I wanted to be undefeated. I wanted to work hard. I wanted to get myself to the top of the sport, and I got there, and then I failed. So uh, this is another opportunity to, 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 to get it right. 
And um, you know what, man? I don't want to. I can't lose this fight. And by the way, before I let you go, are you going to take your foot off the gas as far as training is concerned? Dana White has has criticized AKA. Now we just saw Khabib Nurmagomedov get injured. I mean, what's what's the mindset like now when it feels like there's this spotlight on you guys? Like if, if one of you guys, God forbid, something happens, more criticism is going to come. And there's already this stigma out there. You know what, man? The Khabib thing actually just almost justified Dana's comments. But reality is, Khabib wasn't really... Uh, he didn't do anything to hurt himself. He wasn't doing anything different. He wasn't wrestling. He actually just took a step backwards, and he was like, oh, wait, my knee. Mm. So it, it wasn't a, uh, you know, I'm not going to peel back my training. As I said time and time again, to prepare for a fight, you have to fight, and that's what Kane and I do on a daily basis. Uh, trust me, I don't like it. I don't like sparring five rounds with Kane Velasquez every day. It sucks. It goes hard, and he's very good and very technical. Every day you um, do that? Do, three times a week I Damn. do three times a week, and, and he's as good as they come. So uh, I, I think the world of Rumble Johnson, I think, he's, I think the way he's turned his life around is inspiring, but Anthony Johnson will not beat me on May 23rd. That is not happening. By the way, when are we going to see this video of you celebrating Seth Rollins' win? I've been, I've been told that there's video of this, you going crazy, shedding tears. I mean, I've been told that you reacted <laughs> to that win you know, more emotionally than you would have if you win the belt. When, when, I, I, I want to see this video. I it think the world needs to see it. Important. It wasn't emotional, but it was pure joy. It was so bad that my son wouldn't talk to me for the 45-minute ride, ride home because he was mad because I was cheering for the bad guy because Seth Rollins won. And this dude, my son was done after John Cena fought, but he <laughs> was mad. Trust me. It wasn't just me. It was Andrew Mayer, too, going absolutely crazy, bro. It was like a group of eight of us that went to WrestleMania, and we had a fantastic time. It was something that I wanted to do, and... I'm glad I got to experience in my life. So lucky, man. Are we not going to see it? We're not going to see the video? The video is pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Maybe after I'm the UFC champion, I'll let you guys watch it. All right. Fair enough. You know, I wanted to have you and Anthony on the phone at the same time, but it appears as though he may be ducking you. I don't know where he is. We can't find him, and I don't want to keep you hanging, you know, because I know you're very busy. So uh, that is a fail on our part. I appreciate the time, DC, unless you want to stick around to talk to him. Now, I got to go to practice, but just right. play this message. Oh, Rumbo, guess who's at the door? <laughs> uh, I hope that he answers that door. Uh, uh, DC, thank you so much for the time. Congratulations on the fight. Can't wait for May 23rd. And I know you're very busy over there, so I appreciate you stopping by. No UFC tonight leading up to this fight, right? You're, you're going on hiatus. I'm done. I'm going dark. You know, I'm already dark, but I'm going dark. <laughs> 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 He's funny, man. This guy's funny. This I'm guy's going dark. May 23rd, I'll see you guys. But look, you hear that knocking? Oh, Rumbo! Guess who's at the door? <laughs> the potential future UFC light heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier. Tremendous stuff, as always. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, DC. Really appreciate it. All right, man. Thank you guys for having me. There he is. DC, happy as ever. Happy as can be. And I wanted to do it. You guys, you called me out, and I don't know what happened. Can't find the guy. What's going on? What the dilly? Let me see here. I'm trying to freaking do this. My fingers are so fat. I can't text on this phone. wanted to have the classic MMA hour back to back. No coincidence. You can see right through it. You know what's up. No coincidence. I, I tried to stretch. I tried to make it happen. We couldn't make it happen. I don't I, I'm not going to blame our guys. But it's disappointing. Still great stuff from Daniel Cormier. And, uh, you know, if Ryan Bader is going to agree with it, then I think you have... A, I haven't really seen anyone disagree with this decision. I mean, this is the right call. Uh, in my opinion, he's the, the number two guy. Very little doubt of that. And, and I know that he is the, the betting favorite. I got that email from Bovada, and they're usually pretty on point. But I still, I still get the sense that a lot of people are not as high on his skills as they were going into the John Jones fight. I still get that sense.